Industrial Revolution had this nice little free plugin for Final Cut Pro 7, and Motion 4, and others called Coverplux. This isn't Coverplux. This generator will handle video as well as stills. And if you require audio, you'll have to import the audio separately and add it to the storyline. But generally, it shouldn't be a problem. This generator doesn't do titling yet, maybe in the next version, but I need to go over what CoverFlow SC actually does do so that you can make the best use of it. When you first apply it to your storyline, and you can apply it either as a connected clip or directly to the storyline as a generator, it won't do anything. Okay, you've got to do everything with this. And so what I'm going to do first is go ahead and load up the drop zones. So I've just got some clips over here. I click on a drop zone, select a clip, apply clip. Now it doesn't matter how many drop zones you fill with media. The only number of drop zones is going to show is number of drop zones. And right now I just have three. So I've loaded up four. I can go to four. Or I can just go down to two. Or even just one. And if I go to one and animate it, you'll see it's just the one drop zone. And you can use this to pretty good effect just by itself with one. And it doesn't disturb what's been loaded into the drop zones. So I can add a second one. Like that. All right. So now you get the gist of how this works. Uh, the location from zero to a hundred with all the drop zones like that and you can animate this to go forward backwards stop anything creative you can think of doing with this this is basically it now you have some controls where you can move this back in space Take the camera distance out a little bit and give it a little bit more breathing room. You can change the camera angle of view and sweep it out. Bring the distance back in and you'll see that you can get a little bit of distortion. Well, actually it looks kind of a lot, but all right. I can change the altitude of the camera so I can drop this down and why this becomes important is if I take something like this other generator blobs and drag it into my storyline and drop it underneath then I have this part of the generator set as transparent so that other video can show through and I can show you that with I'm going to just drag this under here and disable that for a minute. Now I have other videos showing through. All right, I can move the camera up and down. So I can take a low angle view of this and I can change the angle that the camera looks at the scene let's bring this into something more reasonable I can drop the floor level if I want so that the media looks like it hovers somewhat. <clears throat> I 
I can change the color of the floor. Dark usually works the best. But I could go with white if I wanted to. And let's take the floor level back up. And you can knock out the opacity just a hair to make a very glassy look. You can blur the reflection and you can mess with the fall off. So there's the basics right there. Alright, the trick to animating this is you want to bring the media up and if you want to square it with the you know the actual plane of the background video or keep it so that it's not distorted in any way then the key is for every frame you multiply it by 11 so this is frame 1 to square this off the location would be 11 you can keyframe that move down the line a little bit the next one set a keyframe go to image 2 which would be 22 move down the line a little bit set a keyframe and this one would be 33 and now you have when you play this the animation for 1 2 and 3 and actually at the beginning of this I want this keyframe to zero so that it starts off comes through it's going to keyframe to there keyframe to there and keyframe to there now I deliberately did not keyframe pause okay normally you would go to a position keyframe it to 11, 22, 33, etc up to 88 since there's eight drop zones 88 would be the highest for the last zone you would keyframe skip a few frames and then duplicate that keyframe to create a pause and then move to the next one but what I wanted to show you and I'm going to zoom in here I'm going to select the clip and type control V and bring up the video animation palette and you can see where the keyframes here are I have one at the beginning I have one right there one right there and one right there and I can click and drag on these if I want to respace how this is keyframed okay and so I want to bring this in just a little bit more bring this one in a little bit more And I have one, two, three. I'll, I'm going to make this the maximum number that I have here. I'll move out here all the way to the end, add another keyframe, and just take this out to a little bit of drift. Okay, you notice at the end they're going to drift a little bit. So now what I have is this little disclosure triangle. And I'm going to drop that down and select location. And I'm going to double click. And you'll see that all of these are straight lines. And what I want to affect is an ease in, ease out for each one of these points. So if I right click on a line, I can choose the uh, transition for each one of these like that oh and you notice you have the choice of linear ease ease in which is an accelerate out 
and ease in and this one is to ease out and accelerate in here but anyway and you can click on it and drag to the right to give it more of a curve or to the left to make it more linear so I'm going to click on each one of these and just drag them as far as I can which is a little bit more of an effect than selecting from the drop down and now that I'm done with that you should ease out come in pause 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 and out there you have it the way this generator is set up it comes in as a default length like this but you can stretch this out or squeeze it in uh, you can do anything you want it's all controlled by how you keyframe the time and so I hope you find this useful and I will catch you on the next one